At this point, I'm honestly not sure if I should ask Jesus to take the wheel or take several seats because this is gonna be a fucking train wreck. Hello and welcome back to my channel. I had a very head-ass idea come to me late at night and it told me, Chandler, you should find new adult books on Kindle Unlimited live and then you should read them, five of them. So that's what we're doing today. Let's go into screen record mode and we are going to go ahead and search Amazon for some of these books. I'm kind of excited about this, kind of very terrified because I'm pretty selective in my new adult reads, typically. Last time I did this kind of video, I had all of the control. Now I have none and I just, I think there's something kind of fun about that. So uh, let's get into it. We're gonna go into the romance section and then we're going to dive right into college and new adults. I'm scared. <sighs> So we're going to click first on the last 30 days new releases, and then we're going to sort by highly rated. Okay, here we go. The first book we have is Accidental Night, A Marriage Mistake Romance. I This doesn't really sound like new adult, to be honest. Let's see what else we have. Okay, so the next book is the fourth book in the series. We're not going to do that. Honestly, most of these are not looking very new adult which is worrisome because we're clearly in the new adult and college category. Okay, the next one is The Secret Girl, a high school bully romance. I think that does kind of fall into the new adult category. I don't want to read this, but I think we're going to have to. So first, first up is The Secret Girl. Okay, keep going, keep going. Uh, I don't think I want to read that one. Um, let's keep going. The Locker Room by Megan Quinn. This one seems like it is a new adult. Just go ahead and confirm. Okay, so this one is actually new adult. So, so far we've got two. We've got The Secret Girl and we've got The Locker Room. Also, it's like I love that we're seeing a fat main character right here, but I know that Madison Faye only writes like smut and my stipulations for this are that I don't want to read really short smut and I don't want to read books that are not considered new adult or that are in a series. Like those are my three no-goes. Um, we have Bad Influence by Charlie Rose. I do know about this book. I do know it's new adult, so that's the next one we're going to be reading. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on my bookmark bar right there. We've got The Friend Zone, End of the Line, book one. I think this one's probably also new adult. kind of sounds new adulty. College Quarterback, Texas Star Player. All right, I'm in. I'm in it. I'm in it to win it. Okay, I'm not as in it to win it, but we're going to do it anyway. Then what else do we have? We're, gonna have to, we're going to the second page. Why are there so many football stars? Perfectly wrong by Summer Brooks. Okay, it is a bully and college romance. So that is, yeah. So we've got five books. I don't know what we're gonna start with quite yet, but we've got five books. And um, this will be an experiment in whether or not I am a dumbass. I'm surprised at how many of these are like sports romances, but I'm intrigued. I haven't heard of most of these except for the one by Charlie Rose, so it'll be a good time. And um, without further ado, let's read some motherfucking new adults. <laughs> Okay, so I've already finished book one, as you guys can tell, and I actually ended up giving this one four stars. This was The Clean Romance, as you guys saw when I was looking on Amazon for new adult romances. To be honest, I barely even noticed that it was a clean romance. I mean, I was aware of the fact that there was going to be no sex, but it didn't hinder my enjoyment of the story at all, and I actually really enjoyed this. I was kind of on the fence about my rating, whether I'd give it four, three stars, I just couldn't tell, and it kind of went up and down as I read. By the end, I was very impressed with the author's ability to make me believe in this relationship. So let me tell you what the is about because I don't think I told you guys when I picked this one. So this book is about a guy named Logan who gets kicked off of his college football team in Texas and his last resort basically is transferring to a junior college slash community college in Seattle to play football, hopefully get noticed by some scouts and either go to the NFL or just graduate with his degree. He's kind of had a rough life growing up and so he finally wants to turn his life around but unfortunately ends up falling for his head coach's daughter who is completely off limits. So basically Logan has to decide if it's worth risking his future to pursue this relationship or if he's willing to risk it all for the girl. And also there's a fake dating element in this. So overall I enjoyed this book a lot. There were some things that made me a little bit apprehensive to give this book four stars and I'll tell you guys about those now. The biggest thing for me that kind of was like eh was that both of the characters are just a little bit too perfect. I mean they both have personalities and they're both pretty fleshed out and we do get a lot of inner dialogue on why they care for each other. You get a lot of scenes of them hanging out which I guess to me justifies like why they would want to be together in the first place 
guys, but I do feel like neither of them had any deep character flaws. That being said, I guess that's also kind of a good thing because I really enjoyed that miscommunication was not an issue here. There was, I guess you could say some like soft cheating. Since there is a fake dating element, I can't really get it too much into it, but clearly anytime there's any sort of, oh God, should I tell them this? Things are always communicated. And overall, I just, I thought that the romance, like I said, was so believable. I really rooted for these characters. That being said, I mean, this isn't like the best love story that I've ever read. It definitely wasn't groundbreaking. There were a lot of things that were very cliche, like the fake dating element, like the kind of naive virginal tutor, tutoring like the, you know, bad boy football player. So there, you know, it definitely wasn't perfect, but it was a really enjoyable read. And I think if you want something a little bit on the softer side, like this is definitely a good generic feel good summary romance. I ended up actually listening to this on audio, which was really cool. I went to download the book on Kindle Unlimited and they were like, hey, do you want the free audiobook? And I was like, yeah, of course. So I listened to this on audio. The audio was super good. Whoever narrated Logan's side did an amazing Texan accent. I thought it was incredible. That being said, the female narrator, when she was acting as the male character, she kind of sounded like Amanda Bynes trying to be the dude in uh, She's the Man. That wasn't like ideal, but other than that, I liked the audiobook listening experience. I think that actually enhanced my enjoyment of the story in general, but overall, I really liked this. I would actually recommend this one. Strangely enough, I really thought this was going to be the one that I was like, yeah, definitely not. But no, this was actually really good. The next book that I'm going to be reading, I'm already about 10% into and it's already something, is Bad Influence by Charlie Rose. So I'm only about 10% into this one. So I'm going to update you guys after I read about 20 to 30% so I can give you a really good synopsis and like a refresh. Like I can refresh my brain on where I'm at in this book because I've kind of forgotten some things. I do have notes, but like I want to give y'all the tea on this book. It's definitely cliche as fuck. Like it reminds me so much of after just the opening scene. There's a party, like she gets taken to her first college party, but I will definitely update you guys along the way for this one. I know I didn't for the first book, but that's kind of part of the course of these videos. And also I don't want to make it too long. I will get back to you guys once I've read a little bit more. I hope y'all are having a hot girl summer because I am not having a hot girl time right now. I'm about 12% into Bad Influence by Charlie Rose. I'm not saying this is as bad as After by Anna Todd because it's like the writing's better, but it's not that much better. The story is almost identical. So this book is about a girl named Allie who decides that she's gonna go back to her hometown to go to college because her dad just died. Her parents are divorced. Her dad lived in her hometown she's gonna try to like reconnect with his memory or some shit so she decides to go to school there she ends up meeting this guy at a bar and has to like pretend to be dating him he's trying to avoid a girl that he knows and so he's like hey bitch let's 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 fake date for like five seconds and they do and Allie's like oh my god he's like so mysterious and cute they meet again at a college party so Allie ends up going to a party with her new roommate slash best friend Halston because that's a real name she remarks that she's 18 years old and and she's the only virgin she knows, so cool. And uh, yeah, basically she runs into this guy again and the girl that he was trying to evade the first time is also at the party, so they have to fake date again at this party. And she ends up not going home with him. He like takes her to her dorm and they end up making out, getting hot and heavy. And she almost ends up banging the dude. The dude's name is Jess, by the way. And apparently he is a douchey frat boy lacrosse player. He does point out that most of the guys that he hangs out with are douchey lacrosse players. And I'm glad that we've gotten that out of the way now that like, we can all acknowledge that he's a douchebag, but they end up making out and he gets a phone call in the middle of almost smash session. It is cut short, sadly. Now, two months later, Jess gets kicked off of the lacrosse team because he's been skipping practice a lot and he says it's because he's got like this, I don't know, history, like he's got to take care of his family or some bullshit. So anyway, that's kind of where we're at. Like I said, not good. It's so cliched and just like stupid. The writing's not terrible, but I am just wondering how I'm going to give a shit about either of these characters. Allie seems like just a typical, unbearable <laughs> new adult heroine, and then Jess seems like a fun twist on like a Harden type character. Also, when he gets kicked off the team, he also ends up punching one of his teammates, so love a good violent streak. I am scared to continue with this one. I think I'm probably gonna update you guys at like the 50% mark and then at the very end, so... <laughs> So between yesterday and today, I've made some rather poor decisions, but I've also made some good ones as well. I decided to sign up for 6 a.m. Pilates class for Monday morning, and then I also decided to DNF this book. That was the good decision, if that wasn't clear. So I really didn't like this book. I thought it was not good in any way. I have no regrets. This is definitely not a book that I would recommend to pick up. Surprise, surprise. The sad thing is that since we last spoke, I got about an additional 15 to 20% into the book and nothing had really changed with the plot. I really didn't like that the love interest, the male love interest, continued to sleep 
with other female characters and it wouldn't be so bad because you know they weren't together yet it wouldn't have been so bad had he not referred to the people that he was sleeping with in a derogatory way and all of the interactions that he has with the main character are very sexualized and not in a fun way like she obviously is rebuking his affections and yet he continues to kind of like throw himself at her it's not really cute and i also just didn't like there didn't seem to be much plot there the female main character i didn't really understand why she was at this university you didn't really get her trying to like reconnect with her father in any way and then i kind of had to just set the book down when i saw that she was going to go on a date with a different male character because i knew that that was going to open up a whole other can of worms when she decided to do that the love interest is going to give her a lot of shit for it there's going to be kind of a weird love triangle thing going on like i can pretty much guarantee I can bet money on it so so yeah it was not great and i do not recommend it however i decided to put that one down and i immediately started up the locker room by megan quinn and guys i'm liking it so much it is so good it's reminded me a lot of the off campus series by l kennedy which is awesome like so happy that i've kind of found like a, maybe a replacement for it the characters are named emery and Knox, which like Knox is kind of a stupid name but like we'll get over it i mean it's noodle what do you expect i like it he is a baseball player she is wanting to be a librarian and i don't know i just i like the banter the banter is like off the charts the humor is also really fucking good in my opinion it is a little bit cheesy but that is new adult you know expect a certain level of cheese going into these things so i'll update you guys more when i'm more into the book i think i'm only about 20 percent in but so far it's redeeming this video it's redeeming my life <laughs> What's a bigger disappointment, me or this book? So I finished The Locker Room by Megan Quinn and I didn't update you guys as I was reading it because I'm garbage and I'm shitty at vlogging. So mm, take me as I am. I'm sad because I really thought this was going to be like the winner of this vlog, but sadly it's not. I will say that it had so much potential and I don't want to not recommend it. Like I'm recommending it and put it in the, little, in the little tally bar up here. I actually really enjoyed reading it. I thought it was really fucking funny. Like just here, let me, let me read a quote for you guys. I bitch slapped his nuts so hard twice. Whack thwack. I made him yelp like a chihuahua who had his tail stepped on. That's not even like the best line in this book. Like there's just a lot of, okay, let's ignore my bang situation here. I really liked the humor. I did laugh out loud a few times. I did smile quite a few times. I enjoyed the character relationship. And even though it felt like a tiny bit insta lovey there at first, like they didn't say I love you until the very end of the book or anything, but it kind of felt a little insta lovey. I wasn't upset about it. It kind of, I don't know, it was cute. Like, I liked how Knox, the male main character, was pursuing doing Emery. Like, I really liked his enthusiasm and his desire to show her that not all men are trash because she had a previous bad relationship that she was kind of trying to run away from and, like, wasn't trying to get into anything serious. So I liked how he kind of, like, broke down her walls. Kind of like that, but, like, not like that. You know what I mean? There were a few things that I didn't like, though. First one is that Emery, the main bitch, she cries a lot. And, like, I cry a lot as well, as I'm sure a lot of you dumb internet bitches do, but Emery cries about everything. When she could ask a question, why, why be smart and like use logic let's just cry so i didn't love that number two there is a considerable time jump that was probably the biggest thing that really fucked me up i thought this was going to be very like l kennedy the deal style with like if, if there was going to be an epilogue if there's going to be time jump it would be possibly a year at the very end of the book this had a time jump at about the 80 percent mark and it felt kind of jarring because up until then the relationship had been very cohesive there's an eight year time gap so obviously they're broken up for those eight years that bothered me because i thought this was just going to be like a college romance and it wasn't so that like kind of threw me a little bit and i think trying to get characters to pick up where they left off after eight years can be very difficult we broke up because we shouldn't be together like right now but like we can get back together after eight years and like nothing's changed like i still love you bitch i never gonna stop loving you bitch and like that's fine and great and good but that's you, you don't get married directly after that do you know what i just I'm not saying that's what happens in this book but i'm just saying it's hard to like rekindle a relationship after an eight year time gap at least hard after like a month of a time gap you know what i mean you can't just like pick up where you left off and then three there were just like little tiny things that kind of irked me there were a lot of like cheesy declarations i like cheese cheese is great you know a good mozzarella from time to time i just didn't really like how there were just too many weird little things sprinkled in like they'd be talking about some funny banter not withholding of their emotions but it was weird because like you got this weird juxtaposition of them bantering to kind of like hide their feelings for each other and then you turn around and he'd be like i fucking love you you know and it just like didn't really make sense it wasn't very like cohesive that being said i do recommend it i think it's a fun book it's been a long time since i've read a sports romance that i was yes about and this one really is that. And I don't even like baseball, but like I was excited about this book. I have since started Perfectly Wrong by Summer Books. It's not good. It's really not good. Let me just, I let me, mm, let me pull up my notes for you. Miraculously, I had lasted through high school as a virgin. Oh shit. 
Here we go again. Everyone buys chicken McNuggets combos and we pull all the nuggets and fries together and eat them. This is said in context because apparently this is something that this girl's family does. This girl's name is Mia. Mia is our main protagonist, the virgin. And apparently this is a family tradition, you know? Crispy nuggets. Family rituals matter. Just because you're all the way in Florida doesn't mean we're gonna forget you. So I hope this means you're not gonna forget us either. How could I forget you? How could I forget my first six piece McNugget meal, mom? I'm not really making much sense, but in essence, this book is poorly written and I can feel the cliches. Basically, <laughs> Mia is transferring to this university in Florida. She's been going to community college and one of her best friends is already at this university, went her freshman year and is dating Mia's high school bully. Eventually, Mia is gonna date her high school bully. So I'm not really sure how this is gonna work. Is she just gonna say fuck you to her friend and like steal her man while she still shames her? Probably. I'm a little nervous, but I think it's gonna be the kind of fun train wreck that I need because I had a disappointment because I thought it was gonna be good this last, you know, book. And then I, like, at least I know going into this one, it's gonna be trash. Uh, I'm not gonna make any promises on when I'll update you, but I will update you. <laughs> As you can see, I have chosen to DNF Perfectly Wrong by Summer Brooks. Let's get into the reasons why this book was ass. I don't feel like I need to really get deep into the plot for you to realize why I DNF'd this at 9%, but here, let me grab my laptop and we'll list the reasons. Reason number one, Tiffany Jackson was a petite black girl, the kind of girl who probably side-eyed everything anyone ever said. Probably the best sort of girl to have on a night out. She says, traffic gets so crazy, girl. I don't want to be one of those white people who gets upset at everything and tries to like be enraged for other people who who have no issue with things. But I did reach out to a friend to see if this was like just a little bit mildly, maybe maybe like casually racist, like a little microaggression or just like pretty stereotypical. And she said, yeah, that uh, looks a little problematic. That looks a little weird and a little stereotypical. And I'm not, I'm not a huge fan. And since I value my friend and her opinions, I didn't fucking like that part. Uh, I, I didn't like it when I read it and uh, she confirmed why I was uncomfortable with it. So that's reason number one. Reason number two, the main dude in this book was a dumb ass. And I think that is really where a lot of my issues with romance stem at the very beginning of books. If I'm gonna DNF a book pretty quickly, it's for a few reasons, and one of the big ones is that the dude is just too fucking stupid. So his chapters are pretty unbearable to read, and the way that he spoke about women was just foul, in my opinion. So here's a quote from him. Might be right that I was being ruthless at the idea of dumping Sam. Sam is Mia's best friend, the one that's dating her high school bully. Might be right that I was being ruthless at the idea of dumping Sam for being a little clingier than your average college girl, but that was because I could have a revolving line of girls if I so choose. Not with that fucking attitude, pal. Number three, the the dude, I, I honestly can't even remember his name. I only remember Sam and Mia. He has one vaguely meaningful conversation with Mia at a party that Sam has taken her to and Mia runs into her high school bully and is kind of forced to confront him. And they have this like vaguely meaningful conversation. And he says aloud to Mia about Sam, you know, Mia's best friend. I think I've just made a big decision about my life. I'm gonna break up with Samantha. I'm kind of sick of her. Damn, guess who gasps because she's standing right there? Uh, it's Sam. That was a really nice end to a, uh, to a relationship. It's not even that he was so attracted to Mia or that it was like one vaguely meaningful conversation. He's like, no, nope, that bitch is out. Sam, can't have her. Which then I think raises the question, how does Sam feel about this? And that brings me to point number four as to why I DNF'd this book. Mia has really fucking terrible friends. When she goes to comfort Sam about what has just occurred, how Sam is kind of being savagely dumped by her boyfriend who she assumed was so great, this is what Sam has to say because Mia was trying to, you know, say, hey, he's just a jerk, like you don't need him anyway, you know, like a good friend would. Sam says, he's not some jerk. My boyfriend, you're so freaking prejudiced against him. Bryant's my boyfriend, okay? He's the most important person in my life. You may have thought it was you, but then you had to, you disappeared on me. All because you didn't like that I was dating your high school enemy. You could have just grown up, Mia. Babe, you're so pathetic sometimes. That's what we're not gonna fucking do. <laughs> I cannot stand when female friendships in books are not realistic. And by that, I'm not saying that people don't have friends that are quite this shitty, but I don't like when that shit is not realized because I'm, I can almost assure you that what going to happen had I read farther would be Mia and Sam eventually making up and just calling it whatever but it's clear from this quote that Sam has no respect for Mia as a person not just in the fact that she spoke to her this way but the fact that she is dating someone who caused a lot of emotional distress like I could never dream of dating one of my friends bullies or someone who has antagonized them like if I hear about a friend getting treated wrong even a little bit I don't want to be friends with that person right so this is just not good and I know that there's gonna be a reconciliation that happens so I just could not in good 
conscience continue to read. I don't even like the premise of the book in general. The idea that she is going to somehow come to terms with her high school bully and he's gonna apologize and it's gonna be fine, like it's great that he's probably going to apologize, but I don't like that we're romanticizing bullying, which is kind of a weird thing because I don't really mind bully romances in some regards. This one to me was just too extreme and the guy's too much of a dick and um, everything's very situational, right? But this I just, I couldn't sit with. That's just the way the feta crumbles, you know what I mean? Next, let's move on to the secret girl. This is our reverse harem bully romance. Let me just have past Chandler really react for you guys. I ended up vlogging this experience for the reading rush. So if you want to see like my full thoughts on this book, I have like an entire video. I believe it's called I Finished The Secret Girl or Reverse Harem Bully Romance. If you want to go check that out, I'll link it down in the description or up here. But I'm going to let some clips from that vlog, I'm going to let past Chandler really take you there and then we'll kind of wrap it up. The premise is like very scary. The premise of this book basically is that this girl's dad is the dean of an all boys school and the girl is going to go to this all boys school because her dad's the dean. She decides that she's going to pretend to be a guy because the only other female who's gone to this school got murdered. So she probably doesn't want to get murdered, bullied, whatever, but I guess she does get bullied. I'm scared. The first page of this. Basically, it's this girl's first day of school and she's supposed to be like, I don't even know. She's talking to her dad, the dean. He's like, why don't you go to the cafeteria, find a spot, get settled. The first things out of this bitch's mouth are, my boobs hurt and the bandages are pulling on my nipple. So I just can't imagine saying that to someone I'm related to and um, it's just off to a start. So this is just yikes. This isn't like a cute fourth wall break. I'm confusion. I don't know how many guys are gonna be in this harem. She's just lusting after every man she runs into. Child, boy, guy, every guy she runs into. It's not getting any better. I really, I can't deal with the fourth wall breaks anymore. It's been trampled on. This self-published nonsense, like at the beginning of the book, it says something to the effect of there will be sexy times, but maybe not in book one. So I hope I'm not being scammed. She was indeed being scammed. <laughs> There was no sex in this book. I was so disappointed that I had to go through this emotional journey and not be rewarded, especially since I had so many issues with this book. Basically, the plot that I laid out to you guys holds completely true, but there was an element of deception that I felt felt particularly transphobic. Whenever I posted the vlog for The Reading Rush, a couple of people, and, and one of one of them is a trans friend of mine, said that, the, that my thoughts on the book probably meant that the book was transphobic. So that's automatically, for me, a do not read and an automatic one star, but also the writing was just bad beyond the blatant transphobia. The author was just not able to convince me of the fact that this girl, Chuck slash Charlotte, was in love with six different guys. Two of the guys get more screen time or I guess like page time than any of the other dudes, but none of them had compelling enough characterization for me to really root for any one guy or root for all of these guys to end up with her. I, I'm not even sure how the logistics of that would really work out to be honest. I'm not saying polyamorous relationships don't work. They definitely do, but it was really stretching the, the bounds of my belief a little bit too, too much. The fact that high school, like a typical douchebag high school guy is going to be like, yeah, I want to get with you. And I'm also cool with my entire squad of friends getting with you too in like a permanent situation, not just like a, you know, fun, fun time situation. It didn't seem realistic to me. Not that the, like the sexual component of that was explored very much, but I know that it is in future books. I'm just like, how, how is that going to work? Also, the bullying was super weak. Never thought I'd be saying that. The bullying was very weak and it really served no purpose. And I say that, you know, I did appreciate that the bullying wasn't super abusive, but I also didn't understand why the bullying was done. It was like very, harmless pranks on Chuck slash Charlotte. The only justification we're given for why this entire squad of guys is ganging up against her is because she doesn't fit in and she's snobby and she is the son of the dean or whatever according to them like that's that's why they but, but they just it didn't it was not compelling it did not make sense it was not reiterated enough and none of her actions really backed that up had she actually been snobby had she been kind of a shithead i could have understood maybe some of the behaviors in retaliation but it, just, it did not make any goddamn sense and i gave this book one star as you guys saw <sighs> In conclusion, <laughs> I think I've learned from this experience and I think that's what I'm gonna start doing in these videos. I'm just gonna let you know right now uh, kind of what I've gained from, you know, each particular reading experience. Don't trust Amazon. In that, I mean, I, I thought I had done a pretty good job at avoiding the books that were, you know, clearly paid promotion and clearly being advertised to me, but I don't think I really got past that. I really do think that a lot of these books that were being recommended to me were just pretty packaging and were insidiously targeted at me, 
maybe it was based on, you know, some algorithm that Amazon has done, but I didn't like most of these books, you know? I only really recommend two of them. So that doesn't really bode well. So I think that I've learned that I need to be more careful at what I click on on Amazon because they will recommend shit based on what you click. Also, I just think that I need to listen to my instincts. When I pick new adult books, I typically go on Goodreads to see what my friends have said, and I didn't do that really before looking at these books, clearly because that wasn't the point of this video, but I think in the future, I'm just gonna keep doing what I was doing. That's all I have for you guys today. Let me know if you liked this format of this I Read 5 video better. In the previous one, I ended up vlogging and then doing the wrap up at the end. This one, I did like little mini wrap ups of each book throughout. I I don't know what works better for you. Let me know in the comments down below. Also, let me know what the worst book you've read recently is because I'd like to know. This video has been over a month in the making. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, let me know down in the comments below along with that other stuff I just asked for. I love you guys so much and until next time.